Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Foolish boss publicly berates a well-loved employee for being lazy, so we show him just how much work she really does. The second story. I created a website and the city is threatening to sue me. I became a winner anyway. The third story. Liar lost her car and her job because she decided to cheat in court and hurt my friend. Today's first story is, You said she didn't do much work, and now you're covering for her. See just how much work there is. In my workplace, there are a few departments. The ones relevant for this story are mine, which we'll call output, and the other one, which we'll call admin support. Output has about 120 people, including myself. We use a lot of materials and equipment to get our work done. The admin support group is much smaller, maybe 15 people. There are two managers in that department, including Fool One. One of the women on the admin support team, Sue, is one of those lovely people that you want to have in your workplace. She's kind, bubbly, and does her work well. She's responsible for preparing all the equipment and materials that Output needs. Sue's work is tricky because she needs to manage all the materials we need on the floor and also handle all the special requests that anyone on the Output team needs. Depending on the day, she can have very little work, or some days it's just non-stop. Her boss, Fool One, comes by on one of the days where Sue has very little work to do. Fool One doesn't like seeing Sue sitting there doing nothing, but can't file a formal complaint because Sue is too good at her job. Inventory is fully stocked, all special requests completed earlier, etc. This seems to bother Fool One. So Fool One publicly berates her for doing nothing, tells her to look busy, really just a rant that you'd expect from a foolish boss. The output team all loves Sue, so of course we remember this. Our opportunity for revenge came only a few weeks later. On a Tuesday, usually Sue's busiest day for whatever reason, she called in sick. The other woman Sue usually works with is out on vacation. The only person who can cover for her is of course Fool One. So you think Sue is lazy and doesn't work hard? Well, it's time for you to find out just how much she does. Word quickly spread on the output team, and we decided it was a great day to stock up on all the possible custom equipment and materials that we would need for the next couple weeks. Within an hour, the amount of requests that Fool One needed to complete was almost out of control. We saw Fool One running back and forth visibly distressed and overwhelmed by the amount of work he needed to do. We on output made sure to add on to that stress by constantly poking our heads in and asking, where's that thing I requested? I need it quickly. Keep in mind there's about 30 of us participating in this, so there were really a lot of demands. By the end of the day, Fool One was visibly exhausted. He did maybe two thirds of the requests we put in and stayed several hours later just to finish it all. The following day, Sue came back and she laughed when we told her what we had done. As far as I know, Fool One had never complained about Sue's work ethic ever again. The next story is, City threatening a lawsuit to get me to take down a website criticizing town odors. About four years ago, a large rendering plant purchased a factory in our small town in Iowa that's been causing all kinds of terrible odors ever since. We're talking rotten blood, dead animal, old beer fumes hanging in the air multiple days of the week for years. These smells are particularly nasty on warm and humid summer days. After living directly across the street from the plant, I decided to use my skills as a developer to create a website criticizing the government of our town and the city council specifically for taking no action and letting the factory pollute our town. At the bottom of the website in the footer, I left a blurb that says town is still being polluted as of current date. After a couple of years of the site being up with little attention, I get a sudden spike of traffic, around 2k visitors over a few days, and we finally start hearing from the city that they'll be taking action. First, the city council holds a town hall and asks for everybody's complaints regarding the rendering plant and smells. They also print the name and phone number of the city attorney and ask callers to forward their complaints there. After that, they begin issuing fines to the plant, which they disregard and as far as I'm aware, never pay. Eventually, the city sues the rendering plant and the rendering plant counter sues. I've updated my website after each development takes place. The last piece of news to come out of this whole situation was that each side had decided to drop their lawsuit around July of 2017, but with no agreement about the odor. I did not update the website to mention that the lawsuit had been dropped. It slipped my mind after reading it. The domain name is along the lines of townnameisagoodplacetolive.com, and the first thing you see on the site is a big yellow block with huge text saying not yet. It used to say no before the city started finding the rendering plant. Everything has been quiet for months now regarding this website and the odor. While the city dropped their lawsuit and I still consider the issue unresolved, 
The smelly days only spring up once or twice a month now. However, this afternoon I received a letter from a law firm representing the city. It contains screenshots of my website and screenshots of the GitHub repository proving that I'm the owner. The gist of the letter says, Our firm represents the city of town. You're the author and domain name owner of domain. We've attached proof. You are understandably frustrated by the issues with rendering plant, which have been alleviated through litigation. However, you've not modified your website despite the progress made. In fact, you re-registered the domain name in 2017 rather than take it down. I had the domain set to auto-renew. To make matters worse, the website contains a recital that the town is still being polluted as of the date someone views the website. This leaves the impression that the information on the site is current. I am reliably informed that the clinic lost a physician prospect who read your website. At present, the website libels the city of town, interferes with recruitment of businesses and new residents, and negatively affects property values. That interference is likely your intention, since you took the time to re-register the domain name. I'm writing to ask that you take down your site and not replace it with other derogatory material. If the website is not taken down within 10 days, your next notice will be in the form of a lawsuit. I'm inclined to disregard this letter, as my admittedly naive understanding of the law says the First Amendment to the US Constitution was created so citizens can criticize the government without fear of retribution. However, I realize there's a difference between federal, state, and municipal governments, and I'll be the first to admit there's a little bit of pride and defiance clouding my judgment too. Nobody's being disparaged on the website except for the city council as a whole. The only person's name mentioned is the name of the city attorney and their phone number encouraging citizens to call and voice their complaints about the smells. The attorney and their phone number were being printed in local newspapers asking readers to do the same. I do mention the name of the rendering plant with a picture of their factory, but the letter I received is from attorneys representing the city, not the business. I've scheduled a consultation with a lawyer, but is it a good idea to leave this site up and risk a lawsuit? Edit. I saw the lawyer this morning who agreed that it seems like this would be violating my First Amendment rights, and that it's not possible to libel or defame a city. However, he was unable to take the case, as he's a real estate lawyer, which I knew going in, but my choice for law offices in town was the one I saw this morning, or the one that sent the letter yesterday. He did give me four good recommendations for lawyers outside of town, and specifically outside of my town's sphere of influence. I've got an appointment with one of these lawyers on Tuesday morning, and I've also contacted the ACLU location in Iowa as a few others have suggested. All in all, I'm feeling pretty confident that this letter is just an attempt at scaring me into taking the website down, though I worry that I'm slowly running out of the 10 days, time they've given me to comply. Update. A few months ago I posted here asking for advice after the city council of the town I live in sent a letter, demanding that I take down a website critical of them, or else they'd sue me. Most of the comments I received confirmed that yes this was violating my First Amendment rights, and yes I should seek a lawyer. So I did so. I set up a meeting with one of the two law firms here in town. The other law firm is the one that sent the letter, and he agreed with what everybody else has been telling me. However, he declined to represent me, as he's largely a real estate attorney and recommended I speak with someone outside the city's little sphere of influence. Skipping over the unnecessary details, I met with the other lawyer, but wasn't able to afford representation at the time. I updated my website to be more fair to the city itself, but risked leaving in a few barbs toward the city council and the lawyers representing them, borrowing a few Reddit comments about squander taxpayer money on spurious advice and pointless legal services. Once I updated the website and the city realized I wasn't going to take it down, a different attorney from the city's law firm contacted me and wanted to chat over coffee. I went, although now I realize I probably should not have done so. He was very friendly, telling me he thinks the whole situation had been badly handled, but he made it clear that he thought I should take down the website because it was hurting the town and we both want what's best for it. He also told me there was a reporter from a newspaper calling around trying to get in touch with me and he didn't think I should talk to them, again because it would damage the town. I declined the interview because I was afraid I'd get sued, whether justified or not if I said something the city didn't like. Of course, I was too naive to realize that the city themselves would have no problem talking to the reporter. So she ran her story and I was made out to be the bad guy troublemaker by the city officials she interviewed. What's more, a city councilman, the mayor, and the city administrator all denied sending a letter to me. They were also quoted as saying there may be legal stuff coming down the road. A few weeks later, I received another letter from the law firm, and this one was weird. It was the attorney from the original letter writing on his own time to explain all the reasons he thinks he can sue me, citing several Iowa judicial cases and going on about disparaging property. He told me I was making a stupid argument and attributing unfounded legal arguments to him. The letter ended by saying it wasn't a threat of litigation and not intended to deter me from exercising my legal rights. This was around mid-January 2018. 
I received the first letter mid-December 2017. Everything was quiet once again for two more weeks, until I got an email from the legal director at the ACLU of Iowa. On the advice of Reddit, I had emailed both the ACLU and the EFF, but after over a month with no response, I had figured they were too busy to look at my case. I was very happy when she contacted me and wanted to talk. I spoke with the director and long story short, she thought what the city was doing to me was an egregious violation of my civil rights, and the ACLU of Iowa wanted to represent me in a lawsuit against the city. Toward the end of February, we filed suit in federal court, and by March 29th, we settled the case after the city agreed to these five terms. They had to agree to a permanent injunction, where they can't threaten to sue me or actually sue me for any website or content I produce regarding the town. They must pay legal damages to me. They must pay attorney fees to the ACLU. They must write an apology letter to me. My favorite part? The city's staff and its attorneys must take First Amendment training. All in all, I'm incredibly impressed with the ACLU's work on this case. I know it's not typical to file a lawsuit and win a month later, but I think that just shows how blatant their attempts to censor me were. I'm super grateful to the ACLU for helping me with this, because as I said above, I wouldn't have been able to afford an attorney, and the city would have gotten away with their threat. The last story is, I don't like liars. This happened five plus years ago, and it's still one of my proudest moments. I was dating this guy Dan going through a custody battle with his ex-girlfriend over their toddler. We worked at the same bar with this girl named Billie Jean. Billie Jean was an old friend of Dan and had worked with him before. She also had previously worked with the mother of Dan's child Rachel and everyone was seemingly friends and remaining civil or so I thought. Billie Jean had secretly taken sides and wrote a terrible affidavit lying about Dan. Dan somehow got a copy of it. I don't remember how the court process went. As I was reading it I kept getting more and more irate. I hate liars, and one thing I really felt that crosses a boundary is using a child for leverage to hurt the other parent. Billy Jean was knowingly lying under oath, and siding with Rachel to prevent Dan from parenting his kid, and he was by no means a bad dad. Well, Billy Jean had enemies. Enemies that I worked with and had easy access to contact. These enemies had sold Billy Jean a car that she wasn't paying them for. I didn't necessarily like the people who owned the car, but the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I called them up and told them I came in peace. I asked if they had Billie Jean's address to get back to their car. They did not. I passed off Billie Jean's info and waited for her to call me. Now I was one of two people who could have ratted out the location of the car, and when Billie Jean called me to tell me her car got repoed, she said she had no idea who could have done it. It would have been either me or her ex Robbie. I told her casually I don't think it was Robbie, and I swear up and down she responded with, well who would have done it then? I held back laughter and finished the conversation with half aid oh I don't know that's so weird type comments until she hung up. Dan was next to me in the car snickering. Dan once shared custody of his child and Billie Jean lost her bar job because she didn't have the transportation to work an hour away. To this day I wonder if she ever pieced together that it was me. I don't like liars. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe and have a good day.